The exciting new divers collection from Lego System. Each set's a New Lego Technic. The ultimate design power. I know, I know, it's exactly what you guys were thinking. Of course we'd follow up a video about one of the most iconic characters in gaming with a building toy line from from 20 years ago. Lego is great. You probably grew up with it, I sure did. It's not only a great toy, but it's something that fosters imagination, engineering, and creativity. But if you're Lego in the late 90s, one aisle of the toy section isn't enough. You see how well action figures are selling, and you'd like a piece of the pie. From there, we get the focus of today's video, along with a few fairly good things to keep in mind when it comes to character design. Hi, this is Brooks with Character Design Forge, and yes, I am going somewhere with this. The LEGO system sets, the ones that we're all familiar with, and the ones that are featured in the LEGO movie, are just one kind of interlocking brick system. But a more advanced type of LEGO, one that was initially called the Expert Builder series, is called LEGO Technic. And this features things like gears, rods, axles, and a lot more functions. Most of these sets were vehicles, up until the introduction of our first buildable action figure line, the Throwbots or Slizers if you're outside the US. The story of the Throwbots is almost non-existent, and that's kind of what this video is about. You had eight different figures that represented some element or biome, typical stuff. Water guy, ice guy, electric guy, jungle guy, rock guy, fire, duh. Guy. Now I had a few of these when I was a kid, but I had to grab a few on eBay for this video. As the name alludes to, each one comes with a few frisbee-like discs, which can be thrown via their flexing arms. Each one also comes with a stylish case complete with belt loop. The idea here is that you would collect and trade discs with friends and then tote the case around on your belt, obviously. Now each of these discs contains either an elemental symbol or an image of one of the throwbots in action. Keep this in mind because it's something we're contrasting later. What's notable about the throwbots is that they're all made up of essentially the same pieces, with a few context-specific extras like a machete for Amazon or wheels for Turbo. By the way, this guy was like one of my favorites as a kid, like who doesn't want a giant arm protruding out of the side of their race car? It makes sense that a lot of these pieces were reused. Molding plastic into new shapes and then mass producing them is an expensive process. So it's interesting to see color and composition of shapes used as a solution to generate distinct characters, many with a fairly unique silhouette. Character designers are familiar with the idea of working within constraints, but being limited to a certain amount of pieces and kinds of pieces is definitely a curveball. Very little promotional material or lore was available for the Throwbots. The most we get is the hint of an idea that an asteroid hit their planet and some of the later Throwbots are reduxes or combinations of the previous Throwbots. I remember scouring LEGO's early Flash website for anything about these guys, but there was really nothing. I mean, I can barely come up with any commercials for B-roll here. Most likely the plan was to develop more story if the line was more successful. And while this may have been frustrating for seven-year-old me, I think that the lack of a story actually stands out as a refreshing feature. How so? Given LEGO status as a sort of sandbox tool, the same way that you can take a pile of pieces and create your own model, I think being given the same open-ended pieces of an incomplete story allows you to change and create things the way that you'd like, and opens up the possibilities for kids to create their own story. Now, don't get me wrong, I love storytelling and the lore that comes along with things like toys and games. It's how we get things like Transformers and other toy commercials as cartoons. But I have this funny mental image of, for instance, kids playing with Marvel action figures and going, Drax and Black Panther can't team up, they haven't even met yet. Or, don't fly Iron Man too close to the liquor cabinet, he's had a crippling addiction since issue 120. I'm not making any assumptions, but is there a chance that anyone, including kids, could allow canon to inhibit their fun? Is the non-canonical free-for-all a dying art form, replaced with strict and serious adherence to continuity? 
Could the removal of such a temptation actually be a quality of merit within a climate of excessive world building, cinematic universes, and 30 minute Kingdom Hearts summary videos? Anyway, throwbots. An additional piece of the puzzle here is that Lego at the time is very pro-conflict, but anti-violence, meaning that characters can take sides, they can be against one another, but there's few clues that things actually ever came to blows. You could assume torches' torches are intended to maim or harm, that those laser cannons shoot more than lights, or that Amazon's machete is for more than just foliage, but they will not concede that point. Lego followed up Throwbots with Robo Riders, quick to build, action-packed functions, and great shooting. They come in cans with secret codes to games on the internet. There are six cool models and lots of fuel for your imagination. Robo Riders. It's in this next series that the storytelling is equally as vague, but where I personally can trace back a few points that ultimately led to a love of character design. Robo Riders were half motorcycle, half robot. They maintained the disc throwing, the elemental distinctions, and vague conflict of the throwbots. In fact, the last set that was ever released, Boss Robo Rider, no one even knows if he's supposed to be the bad guy or the leader of the good guys. At least this time around, we get a little flavor text for each character and a central conflict about a virus that needs to be defeated. I'm pretty sure I had all six of the original Robo Riders, but do you want to know what my favorite part was? It wasn't the Robo Riders. Remember how the Throwbot discs were simply images of the Throwbots doing stuff? Well, the discs that come with the Robo Riders feature completely original characters. As in, these aren't even Lego characters or Lego minifigures. There's hints of Lego and Technic elements here and there, but they're just new. Each disc features a different character, who had like a power level associated with them, but the what or why of that isn't explained. All of these characters are showcased in the back of the manual, which you can still download from Lego's website. I remember this because I carried any of the given manuals around with me to the grocery store in the back of the car, trying to figure them out. But also imagining and filling in the gaps where there was no narrative force or context. The best that anyone can guess is that these characters are supposed to be a form of antivirus program to defeat the virus that's taking over the Robo Rider world. But what they are doesn't actually matter. A set of characters existing in a complete vacuum were still powerful to me. It helped lay the foundation for a future in character design. And I think most importantly, it shows that sometimes having gaps in a story all the way up to intentionally open-ended pieces can be a good thing. They can actually prove to be fun, just as much as theory crafting or hunting down explanations can be fun in the other direction. Lego followed up Robo Riders with Bionicle, a series that has more lore than you can shake a Coley stick at. But personally, it makes me wonder what other Minecraft-esque non-stories can be told nowadays. And I think it would be an interesting task to undertake to try and build something like that from the ground up. Until then though, may your belt loops be laden with the heroic deeds of these guys. That's it for me today. I'm making new videos every week here on Character Design Forge. Liking the video helps other people to see it, and subscribing on YouTube lets you know when new videos are made available. If you'd like to support me, you can go to patreon.com slash bageldenizen, which this month, I guess about $15 went toward old Legos, but usually it goes toward better things like rent or equipment or better quality video. You can also support me by going to gumroad.com slash bageldenizen where my story Parcel Stitch in Time is finally out. You can follow me at Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch also at bageldenizen, and you'll see all those things in a few seconds. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.